Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Chicago Express. This is a two to six player auction route building train game where you take the role of investors in the late 19th century train industry. You will be investing in companies, expanding their lines, developing locations, and collecting dividends trying to become the best investor. How do you become the best investor and win the game? By having the most money at the end of the final dividend payout. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components, setup, and how gameplay works in Chicago Express. Now let's take a look at the components. You have the main game board. On the left side of the main game board, you have three gauges for the three actions that you can take on a turn. At the top, you have the gauge that tells you how many of those types of actions are available. At the bottom of the board, you have the industrial tracks for the three industrial cities, Detroit, Wheeling, and Pittsburgh. Around the bottom and right side of the board, you have the income track. This lets you know a company's income level and the number that they will pay out total in a dividend payout. On the bottom right of the board, you have the fifth charter. This company is only open when a player makes it to Chicago, and this company starts in Fort Wayne. And at the top of the board, you have the map. You have city hexes or industrial city hexes that have red or black around the hex. Any number of companies can go to these cities, excluding our starting cities, which are on the right. Plains hexes. Any number of companies can go to these locations. Forest hexes. There can only be one company in these hexes. Mountain hexes. Again, there can only be one company on these hexes. Inside the hex is the cost to place a train on the hex. The cost is in red. If it is a city or plain hex, that cost is per company in that hex. The black number in the train is how much you will increase the income for that company when it is located in that hex. The house icon on the hex is how much you will increase the income level if a house is developed in that hex with the dollar signs adding $2 to the company charter. Houses, these are used to develop hexes. Money, in each company or color, you have the charters. There are five charters with one printed on the board. On the left side of the charter is the number of trains that are available and a spot to put the trains. On the right side of the charter is a spot for the money for that company, and below that is a spot for the shares for that company, along with the total number of shares for that company. Company tokens, these have plus 50 on the back of the token, so that if your income ever reaches above 50, you could flip it over to indicate it's plus 50. Counters, these are used to mark your spot on the income track. Shares, these are used to indicate your ownership in a company. Locomotives, these are used to expand your line across the map. And then finally, your rule book. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're gonna be setting this up for a three player game which takes five steps. Step one, place the main board. Place the main game board in the center of the play area with the gauges on the green start space. Step two, place company components. Place the charters next to the main board with the locomotives on their indicated locations the shares on their indicated spaces, place the tokens on the side of the charter, the counters on their indicated spaces on the income track with black to the side, and one locomotive on their start hex on the right side of the map. Step three, place houses. You'll place the houses on the house depiction in the middle of the main board with a house on one for Detroit, three for Wheeling, and four for Pittsburgh. Step four, choose a banker and hand out money. You'll choose a player to be the banker, and then they will distribute $120 divided evenly amongst all the players. So in this case, $40 each. Step five, auction shares. You will auction off one share of the four starting companies. Keep in mind that black is not available until a company reaches Chicago. You will auction them off in order red, blue, yellow, and green, with the banker starting the first auction. The player who wins the auction for the red or PRR company starts the game. The starting bid for each auction is the income number divided by the number of shares that have been auctioned off or are auctioning now. So in this case, the starting bid will be the income number on the track. If no one bids after the starting bid, 
then the starting bidder will get it for free. Once a player passes, they cannot rejoin the auction. Once a player wins the auction, they would place the money on the company and gain that share certificate. Then the next auction would start with the winner of the last auction. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. A game consists of a number of turns until one of the four conditions have been met. Three or more companies are out of locomotives. Three or more companies are out of shares. There are three or less houses left. Or Detroit is at eight. Then the game would end after the next general dividend is paid out. A turn. Starting with the red or PRR share, going clockwise, you take one of three actions. Auction. Develop a hex or city or expanding a railroad. Whenever you take one of these actions, you will move the indicator to the right. If it reaches red, you cannot take this action. Now let's look at the three actions in detail. Auctioning a share. You may choose any of the four companies to auction a share unless black is available, which is caused by another company making it to Chicago. The player who chose this action must bid the starting bid or pass. The minimum bid is equal to the income number divided by the number of shares that have been sold including the current share that is being sold. If it is a decimal, you would round up. Then going clockwise, players would bid up that number or pass. Once players have passed, they cannot rejoin the bidding. If no one bids, the share is placed back on the charter. When a player wins the auction, the money is placed on the company. In this case, our first two turns were auctioning a share. Action two, developing a hex or city. For a city or mountain, you'll place the house on the hex and then increase your income track for that company. When placing in a forest, the company would get $2. For the industrial cities, or outlined in black, you would place a house and then move the marker on the industrial track one to the right. And the only one that is not done this way is Detroit. Detroit is developed every time dividends are paid out. Then anyone who has a locomotive in that city would go up the difference on their income track. Action three. Expanding a railroad. A player can expand a route of a company they have at least one share. You can expand up to three hexes. Keeping in mind that only one locomotive can exist on a forest or mountain hex. The cost the company would pay is in red and they would pay per locomotive placed including this one and it would come from the company's money. Then they would increase the income track for that company based on the black numbers located in the locomotive. And if any of those hexes have been developed, you would also go up that number on the income track. If you place the locomotive on the industrial city, you would go up the income track, the number on their industrial track. When a company places a locomotive in Chicago, you would trigger the Chicago phase. This is carried out in two steps. First, the company that placed their locomotive in Chicago would pay out a dividend. Then step two, if it was the first locomotive placed in Chicago, you would open up the Black Railroad. They would place their first locomotive on Fort Wayne, place the counter on one on the income track, or three if Fort Wayne has been developed, and then you would auction off the first Black share. Then turns would continue. As soon as a gauge is on red, you can no longer perform that action on your turn. When two of the gauges are red, we go into the dividend phase. The dividend phase is carried out in three steps. Step one, you would pay out your general dividend. You would first double check to make sure that your income level is correct, and then the companies would pay out their dividend. The dividend is equal to the number on the income track divided evenly amongst the shares. If it is a decimal, you round up. Step two, you'll reset all the dials to green, and then step three, you will develop Detroit. You would move them on the industrial track one, and anybody who has a locomotive in Detroit would go up the income track one. And then turns would continue clockwise until one of the four in-game conditions are met. Three or more companies are out of locomotives. Three or more companies are out of shares. There are three or less houses, or Detroit is at eight. When one of these have been met, then the next dividend phase would end the game. Then the players would count up their money, and the player with the most money is the best investor and wins Chicago Express.